I haven't done a Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox tutorial for a while, and today I thought I wanted to do another one. This is episode number 49 of my Creative Toolbox series. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I said, I haven't done a Creative Toolbox video in a while, and I wanted to do one today. Now, I don't know if this is 100% true, but I've heard rumors that Topaz will no longer be supporting Topaz Studio 2. And if that is the case, man, that is a darn shame because it's a great piece of software. And let's comment about that. Let me know what you think about Topaz Studio 2. And if you want Topaz to keep making this software or updating it and making it better. Leave a comment in the comments section below and who knows, maybe Topaz will watch this video and if they see enough people want this, maybe they will go ahead and update it or come up with something entirely new. That would be awesome. Also, let me know if Topaz products are still all running on your computers out there. I would really like to know that information too. I'm using a 2019 iMac Intel processor with the latest operating system from Apple and it still works, by the way. I'm using a stock image today and you can go ahead and download it. I will leave a link in the description below this video. If you want to follow along with me, it's a great way of learning. I really like the stock image, but I think the sky's a little bit boring. Now, I'm working out of Photoshop, so I think I'm going to replace the sky. To do that, you just come up here to Edit, and you'll find Sky Replacement. I'm just going to click that, and you know what? The first sky that comes up for me here looks really good. I just want to drag it down a little bit like that. And I think that looks pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. That'll put that in a group called Sky Replacement Group. Now, I want to send this into Topaz Studio 2, and I can't send it in just the way it is right now. I have to send a pixel layer in, so I have to pull this image all together. So I'm going to use a shortcut, Shift, Option, Command, or Alt, E, and that will stamp the layer. And now everything will be combined into one pixel layer. That's very important. Now, if you own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you could have just clicked this button right here, and it would have done that for you, which is the click. I went ahead and renamed this layer TS2 for Topaz Studio 2. Now I'm going to come up to Filter and launch Topaz Studio 2, and we will let the fun begin. I'm going to do something a little different today, and that is I'm going to come up to Add Filter. I'm going to use a filter I've never used before, I don't think, on a video, and that's the Smudge Filter. Now this is a fun little filter, and what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take the strength and start to drag it up. And I think I'll take it up right around here, like a 42. But you notice that nice uh, whimsical look I get to the image right around there? And then I'm going to take this extent slider, because it looks a little smushy back here. It's smudging, I say, smushy, smudging. It's a little too smudged back here. So if I take this extent slider and I start to drag it back, and I'm going to take it back to right here, like a minus 67. But look at that nice, whimsical look I get. And already, I really like it. Now, if I left click and hold with my mouse, you can see here's the before and here's the after. And I like that. You know what? I could stop right here. And you might say, this is all I really need to do. I love this. This makes a nice piece of art. So I'm going to go ahead and click Accept. I'm not really done yet, but I want to have two different options here, okay? And I'm going to combine another effect on top of this effect as well. But you'll see what I'm saying here in a second. But this is uh, Topaz Studio 2. I'm going to call this Smudge. That way I can know what I'm doing here because sometimes I forget things. Now here's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. So I'm going to do a Command or Control J just to duplicate it. If you have the... Uh, TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this button here to go ahead and copy that layer. I went ahead and renamed this layer TS2 Painting just to keep me organized. So now we're going to come up to Filter and we're going to go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2 again. And we will add some more filters, a few extra filters on top of this. I want to add a painting style to this, so I'm going to come up to Add Filter, and one of my favorites in here, if you watch my YouTube channel when I do these Creative Toolbox series, is the Impression Filter. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and that turns your image 
into a painting. I usually go through here and try different paint brushes out. Like that's type 01, here's type 02, here's type 03. And after going through a bunch of these, I decided I'd like type 03. Now you see these little white flecks in here. I don't like them and the effect is way too strong, but don't worry about that. I'm going to go ahead down to the very bottom of this filter in the texture section. And right now you see where it says solid. Watch what happens to those white flecks when I click original. They go away and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to come back up. And again, I like this type O3 brush, so I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments here. Right now, I have the number of strokes on medium, and I think that's good. But you can do low strokes, see how it's more abstract, medium, or high. You see more detail in the high, which high looks pretty good too. But I think I'm going to go with medium, because I'll be making some further adjustments. Now, the first thing I want to do is adjust my brush size. Now, if you drag it to the right, you'll make your brush bigger. I'm going to drag mine to the left, and I'm going to drag it a lot down to like a minus, or not minus, but a 0.11, I should say. And then I want to take my paint opacity and start to drag this up to the right, and it'll make those strokes look a little bit stronger. And I'm going to go right up around 69 for that. Now, I don't touch every one of these sliders, just the ones I think I need. And I'm going to take the stroke width which makes the strokes a little bit wider. And I'm just dragging that a little bit to the right. I know that didn't do much, but just a little bit. And then I'll take the length of the stroke and drag it to the left to shorten it up. Okay, and I'm going to stop it around right here. I think that looks pretty good. And I think that's about all I want to do. Here is the before and here's the after. Now, I don't like what's happening so much back in this area here, but I'll show you how I take care of that. I just want to keep the painterly effect up on the foreground area. Back here, I don't like it. So we have really good layer masking in Topaz Studio 2. Some of the best, actually. And we're going to come up here and click on this icon. That opens up layer masks. And I'm going to click on this tool here called Add a Gradient Selection or Grad. The tool is actually called Grad, so I'm going to click that. And basically what's happening here, we have the red line and the green line. The green line says everything below this middle point is going to transition down to the green line and then it will be at full strength at the green line meaning that painterly effect will be added as, as strong as it can be right here so i'm going to take this transitional zone and drag this up like this and oh by the way you can angle this too if you click on these blocks okay and then i'm going to pull this transitional zone down in here and there's also some really nice edge aware technology built into here and if I drag it to the right, it really causes that to engage around edges. But I'm just going to drag it the whole way to the left so I get a nice, just a smooth transition. Because I want all this to be painterly effect. But I want to keep it off the sky and this tree and these zebras in the back. So I just want to see where I want this to go to. And I think right there looks good. And then all we need to do is click apply. And that will apply that. And now if I left click and hold with my mouse, we can see here's the before and here's the after, but you notice I just have the painterly effect up in here, and I think that looks good. Now, I have a couple more filters that I wanna add. The next filter is gonna be a precision contrast filter, so I'm gonna click add, and then we'll find precision contrast in the essential section, so I'll click precision contrast. And this is a really nice filter because it breaks your contrast into micro areas of contrast, really small areas of contrast. Think of it as more of a sharpening, so I'll take this to the right and I'll show you. See how it makes the image look a lot sharper. And you can go really crazy and be really aggressive here. If you double click micro, you'll set it back. I don't want micro. The only one I want to use in here is, I believe it's low contrast. So I want to bring out some of the uh, shadow areas in here. And I'll use this low contrast slider to bring those out. And see how they're starting to pop out, which is really nice. And I want to be right there. I think that looks good. Here's the before and here's the after. Now that's all I want to do. But by the way, you have a bunch of different uh, sliders in here. Like there's a lighting section. You can adjust shadow, midtones, and highlights. Uh, you have color adjustments down here. So there's a lot of cool stuff in here. But that's all I really want to use. But the strong point of this contrast filter are these four sliders here. I'll show you what medium looks like if I drag it to the right. It's pulling out medium areas of contrast. And you can also drag these to the left if you want to take contrast away, which is really nice. And you just double click the name and it resets it. And I'll show you, these would be your higher areas of contrast, like these zebra stripes and things like that. But again, 
I don't want that. But you could also remove uh, contrast by making an adjustment to the left, which makes it look really ugly in this case. I'll double click that and reset it. But all I used here was the low. Now let's take a look. If I click this eye right here, you can see here's the before and then here is the after. But it just adds that little extra contrast in there. If you look up in the sky in this area right here, I don't like it. Again, here's the before and here's the after. It takes away that nice soft fill up there. So what I'm going to do, here's a little tip and trick. I can right click on this layer mask and click copy mask. And then I can come up to this layer mask icon and right click it and click paste mask. And now I've removed it up there. So now here's my before and here's my after. And now I like it. I want to add one final filter, so let's come back to Add Filter, and that would be this Abstraction Filter, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And what this filter does, it removes detail, and it can give you very nice artistic effects just by itself. But all I want to do here is take this Simplify Size and drag it to the right. Notice what happens to the image when I start to drag it. See all the details starting to drain from the image? Okay, definitely don't want that much. I'm going to take it back to like a minus 23, or not a minus 23, but just a point 23. Here's a before, and here's an after. Well, that's an overall before and after. I should shut off the layer by clicking this eye. Here's before that abstraction filter, and here is after. Now, I do not like what's happening up here in the sky. So what do you think I can do to protect that? Well, I could come back up here to the abstraction filter, but before I do that, let me go ahead and right click on the impression filters mask and click copy mask. And then just right click on this mask icon and click paste mask. And now I've removed it from up there. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after, but now it's only down in here. Now, I don't like what it's doing to the zebra, but I'm gonna take care of that in Photoshop, and I have a real good tip for you there as well. So I think I'm happy with the overall image right at this point. So all I need to do is come up here and click Accept, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And we're in Photoshop. Now, this painting layer right here, which was just sent back from Topaz Studio 2, if I shut it off, you'll see there's my smudge below it. But here's what I'm going to do. I want to introduce a little bit of that smudge into this image. So I'm going to take this opacity and start to drag it to the left a little bit. And you see how some of that smudge comes back in there. I don't want to go too crazy there, but I think... Yeah, I think I had it pretty good. So here's the before, and here is the after, but I like that. Now, I told you I wanted to take some of the effect off of this zebra, so I'm going to show you a really cool tip here. First, I need to put these two layers into a group, and this is important. So I'm going to hold my Command key down and click on the smudge layer. And then if I right-click and come here where it says Group from Layers and give that a click, That'll put that in a group. I'm not going to name it. I'm just going to say OK. All right, so that's in a group. Now, if you have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you could have just clicked right here, and that would have put those in a group for you. By the way, this is called the TK8 CX panel, and I call this my Swiss Army knife for Photoshop. It's a real handy way of doing things that you do all the time in Photoshop very quickly and easily. So to take some of the effect off of the zebra, what I can do is select subject, okay? Now, if you have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this button right here. If you don't, just come up to select and come down to subject. But you'll notice subject is grayed out because I'm on a group right now. So I'm just going to click on my background layer and try that again, select subject. So if it's grayed out, you're not on, you can't be on a group in order to do that. You have to be on an actual pixel there. But you can see it has selected the zebra. It's missed a few areas in here. I could go here and grab the object selection tool, which is right here, and just go ahead and hold my option or alt key down and just fix that a little bit. Right in here as well, hold the option to remove that area right there. And I want to add this area in and that area in. You know, the subject selection tool works really well, but it's not perfect. 
you know, we still have to use our expertise. It missed a little area here, and I'll show you. I'll take care of that. I'll just paint that out. You'll see in a sec. Now, right now, notice I'm on my background layer. It's active, okay? So you got to come up here to group, and all you need to do is come down and click on this mask icon, and basically, it's removed the effect everywhere, which is the opposite of what I want. So all I have to do is do a command or control I to invert this mask. And now I have my painterly effect everywhere, but on the zebra. Now I want some of that effect on the zebra because that doesn't look right because it is a painterly effect. So what I'll do is open up your properties panel and you see here where it says density, start to drag this slider to the left and you'll start adding some of that effect back in. And you can add as much or as little as you want. So I'm going to bring it back to right around here and that brings back some of the original zebra which i think looks really nice i'll add a little more painterly effect by moving this a little bit more to the left and right there now i'm going to close this property panel but that's a little tip now it's missed some of the grass in this area right here i'm going to get a brush with an opacity of 100 percent and right now i have a black brush so i'm going to type my x key and get a white brush let me zoom into this area so we can really see it down in here. It's hard to notice, but it's right here. So with that white brush, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and just paint that painterly effect back in there just to take care of that little issue. And I want to make sure all this is good over here. I think it's good everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and fit this to screen. I'm going to use my TK8 plugin to do that by clicking this icon right here. Now it fits it to screen. But there you go. I mean, that is it. Now let's see where I came from. I'm going to option or alt click on this background layer. There's the before. And here is the after. Well, there it is, everyone. I went ahead and added a uh, digital frame to it using Topaz Studio 2 just to give you an idea what it would look like framed. And I think it looks really cool. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.